So welcome to irishracing.com for another edition of our forum scan show. Delighted to be joined this week by Pat Healy, who's live from Fundalk. Pat, what's it like up there? Glorious Fundalk. It's um, it's beautiful, Emma. Blue skies. The roads weren't too bad in the way up, thank God. I think we're over the hill with the cold spell. So I've travelled up, um, no problems. And looking forward to eight races here again tonight. And sure, this time of the year just shows you it's great for the Irish racing industry and I like Dundalk I like coming here it's for me personally it's easy work would you believe you could wear your best pair of shoes here in Dundalk and you don't get dirty and the weather is normally kind and um, there's always great stories in Dundalk because obviously with the way the races are framed the small man gets a chance the smaller trainer the smaller owners syndicates and of course the last couple of weeks they had the races framed for the jockeys that had, didn't ride so many winners last season. So the younger lads uh, were getting their chance to put their profile out there. And uh, it was great. And it's going to be, I, as I said, I enjoy it. And it's always exciting in Dundalk. Yeah, like you said, there's always a few good stories coming out. Like it's it's kind of a big help for those smaller trainers. Kind of in both codes, it's kind of hard for the smaller trainers now to compete, I suppose. So so the dogs will be kind of help for them. But um, kind of your your schedule for the weekend. Are you racing both days? Um, uh, I'm nowhere tomorrow. I'm off tomorrow. Kevin and Sean are doing Navin, and I'm pint of pinting on Sunday. I'm going to Killa, so I'm looking forward to that as well. Um. Uh, but there's good race in the weekend. I was looking at it. Um, Navin tomorrow is very interesting, of course. Gordon will probably have his normal treble or four winners. Um, he's he's fielding some interesting horses tomorrow. The two races that took my eye tomorrow were the beginner's chase and, of course, the bumper. Very interesting. The bumper, of course, you have the ex pine of pint horses out of Will coming from Willie Mullins. The Pat Dial horse, the one in Tipperary, or come, uh, the track in Tipperary, and of course Gordon's horse, Trim Castle, won a pint of pint at Castletown Gagan. He's been bought by Jiggins Town. The Willie horse has been bought by Simon Munir and Isaac Swade. And of course, there's a, a horse in this trend by Barry Connell, and he's got a great name, um, William. Is it is it William, uh, William Money? William Money, the, 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 out, the outlaw from back in the West. So, yeah, it's interesting race in Navin and looking forward to that. And, of course, Turles, the, the horse and jockey uh, Kinlock Bray race on Sunday. I was looking through it, and out of the 10 runners, they've won nine Cheltenham Festival races between them. So that's 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 fantastic. It's great to see them horses, and I'm looking forward to that race on, on Sunday in Turles. Also, on Sunday in Turles, I have an eye on the Hunter's Chase, because my godson, Josh Williamson, is riding hardline. And the aim at hardline is to get him to A entry for the Fox Hunters. So between now and whenever the cutoff point is, hardline has to be placed in a hunter's chase. So I have my fingers crossed that Josh will be placed. If he doesn't win, that he'll be placed on Sunday in Turles in the hunter's chase with A entry the, looking down the road as the target. He's he's a real up and coming young rider, isn't he, Josh? You always first winner winner at Clamell there a couple of months ago, but he's kind of gone from strength to strength since. Um, Hardline, obviously a great horse for Gordon as well. And I suppose your your point to point in the lot, so you have a good eye into some of these hunter chasers. Ferns Lock was um he was good in drum hand first him out beaten last time in Down Royal, but uh, you think maybe Hardline or something else could put it up to him, or Ferns Lock probably looks a good one for the for the for the big race in Cheltenham now, I suppose. And, and he's seven now, Franz Lach. I, I loved him last year as a six-year-old, the, the performances he put in. I remember the day he won in Fairy House. I think Bon Barry O'Neill, I think he couldn't pull him up till he went halfway up the back straight. He went up past the regulation fence, which, which is the second fence as you turn away from the stands in Fairy House. And as I said, he's a seven-year-old now. He's probably the, the main the main hunter chaser. Uh, I see the ground in Turles is yielding. And uh, Hardline, he, Hardline wants good ground. So, but as I said, if he runs well and gets placed, that'll be a box ticked for for um, Josh and his dad Norman and Janet, of course, on the horse. 
So this is their project. And for Josh, uh, of course, every young lad uh, tr uh, spin over the international fences. That's what they dream about at that age. That'd be something else. And hopefully that will come to fruition. It'd be, a, it'd be a great buzz for him to get there and I saw fingers crossed for a good line from what good one from a hard line there but we'll have a quick look at some of the some of the graded races I suppose at Tardis as well like you mentioned the Mayor's Novice Chase there a grade two race a few of these have kind of formed and in together um I thought Slice Island approach was brilliant last week being third against the boys um anything here kind of stand out for you you're looking forward to seeing yeah okay. Silent Approach of course uh Con O'Keefe uh that's a great story She's obviously tricky, and uh, Con, Con got her back in the yard. Uh, she takes a lot of work uh, from Con's staff. Danny gets on great with her. She could be, um, obviously, Con, I heard him interviewed there lately, and he just wasn't um, saying that Chetland was the target, that if she was good enough, that, yeah, he'd, he'd be delighted to go. But at the minute, they're happy to tip along. Um, but again, obviously, Gordon's mayor and Willie's mayor, they're decent mayors, but uh, it'd be a great story. I think if Con O'Keefe's mayor went and won, um, Danny gets on well with her, and we wish him all the luck um, in the Grade Two on Sunday. Yeah, I think she should have a good shot at that as well. Kind of quick reappearance, but she looks well improved for for fences this year. But I suppose we'll go on to the big race of the day. Like you were mentioning, so many Grade One winners in here, like Envoy Allen Allah, who appreciate it. So many who give a chance to, I suppose. Um, Aloha looking to be odds on favourite at the moment. Who would you fancy to take this one? I, like, I, I kind of like Envoy Allen, to be honest. I think he's probably still a good shot for the Ryanair this year. Envoy Allen, sure, what a like, what a racehorse. It's like, since he, uh, we all know the story, he was with Gordon, and um, since he won his bumper that time, he won his pint of pint, obviously for for uh, Callum Bow. But uh, what a what a horse! Just gorgeous to look at, and. I've always loved him. He's a three-time festival winner. Um, obviously, he's better fresh. Um, Henry, I think Henry has got a, a handle on, on him, obviously. And I, I love him by Alan. He has to give four pounds to Aloha, who I also love. Another fantastic beast to look at. Invi Allen has won three races at the festival. Aloha has won twice. Going down through it, appreciated has won once at the festival. That's five. Statler has won once at the festival. Um, that's six. So between them, they have their six wins, six festival wins rocking up here. I think the fact that Invi Allen has to give Alaho the four pound, I think that's a big thing for Alaho. He didn't disgrace himself in the King George. He ran a blinder. And um, I think I think if it comes down to it, it'll be close. But I fancy him, I fancy Alaho just a chin in Vi Allen. Yeah, it should, should be a good pointer towards the Ryanair, like you were saying. Anyway, like there's so many festival winners came, came out of this race in the past as well. Like looking through it there, Don Cossack, Aloha won this twice. Size and John won it on the way to the Gold Cup as well. So it should be a great contest. And it's great to see kind of such a good lineup for Thornis as well on a, on a quietish weekend, I suppose. But kind of, I suppose a bit of a disappointment of the weekend was having the few, race, few races in England called off. Um, But we were kind of looking forward to seeing the clash of John Bon and... El Fabiolo kind of on the lead up to the champion chase. Yeah. What's what kind of your take on those two? Like it's one one, I suppose, in in uh, terms of when they've met. Um I I look I'm a, I'm a massive El Fabiolo fan. I can't really see John Mon turning the form around, whether it's next weekend in Cheltenham or in March. Um what's what's your kind of view on those two? Again, two magnificent horses you'd love to own either. Um I, I was in A entry the day they, they took each other on. John Bond just chinned him on the line. And of course, El Fab got his revenge in in, in Cheltenham in the Arkell. Uh, it just shows you're just going back to tracks and the, the cancellation. This time of the year, we all know that the dangers of the weather. And if it's not waterlogged, it's frozen off. And I had a discussion lately with um, Pat Keane, Pat, who retired as um, the journalist with the Irish Examiner newspaper a couple of years ago. And Pat was uh, banging the point about why the lack of jump racing on the run up to Christmas. But I think it just shows you when it comes to race tracks at this time of the year, people have to realize here at home in Ireland, I think we only have about 10 race tracks that can race all year round. Say so Leperstown obviously can race in December, can race in July, Down Ryle the same, Navin the same, Fairy House the same, all your bigger tracks. But I think what people don't realize is that when you, when you, when you have a race there, you also have to plan 
for your meeting in three weeks time or four four weeks time and there's only so much ground on a, on a lot of these tracks and especially in ireland not so much in england and, and people don't give the credit i think to the irish clacks of the courses and the irish um track staff and 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 and, and, fo and foremen there's always fresh ground every day there's racing in ireland there's always fresh ground and that's not easy and that takes work and takes planning and on the run up to christmas where you have that turles meeting and you have a navin meeting leperstown don't race from their flat meeting in october to their four days of christmas and then after christmas of course leperstown they have the dublin racing festival which is fresh ground and you need good ground and good track and then they have two days again in march so they have four and two six and two eight meetings before they kick in for their flat season and you have to give tracks a break and people i think people have to realize that you can't just turn up in gorn park and gallop their gallop a race meeting every week because you have to think of your track you have to think of the ground and you have to think of the next day so i suppose what i'm saying is a lot of credit and 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 a lot of thanks have to go to the those race courses that do race on over the winter and it's not simple and it's not easy as i said if it's not waterlogged it's frozen ascot are unfortunate it was going to be a great day great clash and we all we all look forward to it it's not going to happen now will it will el fab go to cheltenham if they rearrange it in cheltenham maybe he will will he might think i'll just stick to the dublin racing festival but um th these clashes of course we always look forward to them and they're great when they come off but it just shows you the logistics they're not simple not at all and navin are doing a great job i suppose so yes they have a precautionary inspection in the morning i think a half seven but it looks likely to go ahead thankfully um kind of coming out of the cold staff here but yeah it's well deserved phrase for for all the for all the track men around the country it's not an easy job at all and, and they kind of get more stick than they deserve i kind of you'd see it at cheltenham there and stuff when when the ground gets watered a bit and everyone's kind of getting outraged but um i suppose it's easier to sit online and complain when you're not actually out there every morning doing it isn't it I do, and 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 wearing my Lestol races hat. We, like we race in June, we have three days in June, and we have the seven day festival, the harvest in in September. And uh, if you have, if you have a good spell, you have to water. It doesn't please everybody, and then I always admire the clicks of the courses. I think Irish racing is very very lucky to have number one. I think Brendan Sheridan. Um, Brendan is like an older brother to me. I, uh, he's a great friend, but he, he does a magnificent job, as do the rest of them. Paddy Graffin, Larkin Weir. Um, of course, you have now Brian Hamilton is coming in. Brian has taken over the tracks in over the border in Down Ryle and, and Down Patrick. And I hope I'm not leaving. Who, am I leaving anybody out? Tracy's gone to Foss Lass. Um, Oh, Paul Maloney, of course, our own clerk in the stall, Paul Maloney. Um, they do great. They do great work, and it's not simple. And the boys have to turn up at the races. And if the ground, if the water ground is overwatered or underwatered, the trainers are unhappy, jockeys are unhappy, and who gets in the neck? But the clerks of the courses. But I think, all in all, we're very lucky to have the clerks of the courses we have. They do a magnificent job. Yeah, definitely a thankless job and I have to agree most of the time the ground here is, is just what you'd want it to be. But I suppose kind of just getting back to the topic of Cheltenham clashes, about eight weeks to go now to the big one. Anything in particular you look you're looking forward to seeing um in Presby Park? I, I have a love hate relationship with Cheltenham. Um look, it's the best racing, of course it is. It's the most exciting and we all look forward to it. But I think it's a ball has been four days, to be honest. I just think the Ryanair, take the Ryanair chase. Like, okay, commercially, you have that side of it. Four days for the jockey club, uh, the money they make. We all know, we all know about that. But I just think they diluted the racing. I think it's wrong. Those horses, those Ryanair horses, you have a choice. You either go to two mile champion chase or you run in the gold cup. And I think, that's the way it should be. If I had my, if if I had my way, I'd have bring it back to you three days. And if you want to charge double to get in, charge double to get in. Because I still think people would pay it. Because I think the racing would be just unbelievable. People will save up. They'll as they do already. They go to Cheltenham 
I know fellas in the stall, young lads in the stall, they save up all year round to go to Cheltenham. They'll still do that. Uh, but from maybe I'm looking at it traditionally from going back in the old days through rose tinted glasses. Um, but I just think they diluted the, the racing and it's a shame. But look, I'm going off on a tangent. That's Cheltenham. I love it uh, when I'm there. It's hard work uh, for me, um, but I enjoy it. It's our biggest gig. It's Healy Racing's biggest gig of the year. And Sean, my nephew Sean has been with me the last couple of years. And of course, Sean being younger than me, he does most of the running around, uh, which is great. And the boys work from the office during the race and Liam and Kevin. So it, we work it well. It's exciting. But as I said, personally, I think it's a shame that they diluted it. And it probably won't go back ever. And they might make a 50. They can make a 50 if they want. Six races each day, add three more races. And if they started the rugby crowd in England, they could have it on the Saturday. And maybe that's the way it'll go. But um, looking forward to it, of course, Constitution Hill. He's not going to run now. We're not going to see him now till the champion hurl. Will Stateman step up, be able to beat him? We'll see. And, of course, the Gold Cup. Um, I adore the Gold Cup. Galloping Dead Champs. Um, has cemented himself as the proper favourite. But, of course, the faster, slow Martin Brazil's horse. Um, he's not he's, he's, no joke. He's going to keep improving. And he, he'll give Galloping plenty to think about. I think the Irish horses are better than the English horses in the Gold Cup. And I won't complain if it's an Irish winner. It was long enough we didn't have Irish winners of the Gold Cup. So it's great that we're able to go over there now and, and bag the Gold Cup. Um, and, of course, the champion chase... With, with El Fab and John Bunn. There's so many races, and yeah, I do look forward to it. And the handicaps that are coming out now, the, the, I see on social media, all the experts on, on Twitter uh, are, are are in clover at the minute, telling you to, back, to have, keep an eye on this one and that one and the other one, and it's, it's exciting. Yeah, eight weeks, it's a great time of the year to look forward to, and uh, it won't be long coming around. Yeah, it builds a big buzz, I suppose, social media. People are getting more and more excited every year. They, they start talking about it nearly in August now, these, these years. But um, like you were saying, like like it's I, three days. I can always remember it being four days myself, but you can kind of see the argument for it definitely, but it definitely looks more likely to go to five now, which is kind of a pity because it does dilute it. And I suppose like you have a good insight into this. Like you're a big part of the Stoll team. And like the one thing about the Stoll, like I was there this year and, it's just it seems crazy you see all these big bigger i suppose um profile meetings and they can't uh, draw near the crowd that you get down below like what do you think it is that um maybe like i suppose the english race courses in general may, might be doing that that's different to you like you draw like crowds of twenty five thousand there on a wednesday in kerry and you know this grade one cards then they can't get a fraction of that yeah well, i think it's different because it's a festival and it's traditional emma like mm -hmm. the, uh, I'll, I'll tell everybody the harvest, okay, it's a seven-day meeting. But I think really from, from, uh, from a racetrack point of view, making money, it's a four-day meeting. Wednesday on our big days, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Um, Wednesday is Kerry National Day, and it's a traditional day. And I think I, I cover 220 meetings a year between pint of pinting and, and, and racing. And what I see the last couple of years, I think the small days are getting smaller, as in the ordinary days are getting smaller. And I think the big days are holding their own. And we have Tyester's Day coming up in Gorn Park uh, Thursday week. And that's a, tra a traditional day. And the last 10 years, I've noticed, I will see fellas racing in Gorn Park on Tyester's Day. And you won't see them again till a day at Punchestown. And then I won't see him again till Kerry National Day in, in, Septem in, in September. Traditional days that people mark out in the calendar and they say, we're going to go racing, whether it's Arkell is running or, or, or Emma's, Emma Nagel's horse is running. They'll go. And that's brilliant. You need your traditional days. And there'll be a huge crowd in Goan Park for Ty S. this day. Um, going back to Listowel, I think the big thing with Listowel is the community. You need to have the community. You need to have the town behind you. You need to have your locals going racing. I always say, with your racetrack, as in Listowel, 
our core audience, our core race score is an hour circumference around the stall. So you're going back to Killarney, you're going up to Limerick, you're going back to Mallow. That's your, uh, you're going Tipperary. That's your, that's your circumference. And that's your, where you want most your, your patrons to come from. And they do. Um, I would love to be allowed to have mixed cards back in the stall. Galway are allowed it. Uh, we're not allowed it. So this year, what we, what, what we plan to do is not, I love flat racing, but from our point of view, we think down the south, whatever it is, whether it's Killarney or Mallow or the stall on the, on the Tuesday for a flat card, you don't, people, I don't know, the, they say, oh, it's a flat card, they're not going to bother going. For whatever reason, I don't know. So this year, what we plan to do is have Monday and Tuesday flat cards. And that way, then Wednesday on to Saturday, our four big days will be will be our four national hunt days. Speaking to people, um, I meet fellas from Cork, and the boys will say, especially the last couple of, couple of years, oh, if we knew that there, it was an odd flat card on the Thursday, we wouldn't stay Wednesday night. And now we can tell them, come Wednesday for Kerry National Day, stay Wednesday night for a, 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 a great card on Thursday, and they'll go home Friday after Ladies' Day. And that's what we want. We think that's our best model. And hopefully this September, it will be packed out again. Wednesday, Kerry National Day, we'd have a crowd of 25,000 people in and around. But Ladies' Day on, on, on Friday has gone off the charts the last couple of years. We're very lucky to have great sponsor in McElligot's and, and Garage and Tree with Honda. And um, we're getting the guts of 28, 29,000 people on, on, on the Friday for Ladies' Day. And again, the one thing you always want, Emma, the one thing, good weather. If you have good weather, no rain, bit of sunshine, that's what that's what that's the biggest help of all. For sure. And definitely for the ladies they anyway, this so they don't get um destroyed in the nice outfits. But kind of a question I wanted to ask you, like we're gonna ex exclude the stall from this one now, but you, you kind of been racing, I suppose you've probably been to more racetracks than 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 ninety percent of the population. Your favourite racetrack around the world and your favourite point-to-point track around the country? Oh, um, I, I, I pick two around the world. I pick Happy Valley. Happy Valley in Hong Kong. It's unique. Uh, how would I describe Happy Valley? It'd be, if you could imagine Tremor, the track <laughs> in Tremor, a bit flatter, obviously, but just put skyscrapers all around it. Unbelievable. Right in the middle of Hong Kong. What an atmosphere. Um, it's a fantastic venue. Um, it's a great experience. Happy Valley in Hong Kong. And then I'd have to go Santa Anita in California. I've been lucky enough to be there for, for 14 Breeders' Cups. It's, it's just, again, it's the climate. Um, and, of course, it's the scenery of the San Gabriel Mountains in the background. Not as pretty as Killarney, say. There's no place like Killarney, as pretty as Killarney when it comes to... Uh, scenery, but uh, Santa Anita does a great vibe, great history, um, um, and there's always it's for the Breeders' Cup, of course, fantastic race, and and it's it, yeah that that'd be my two. Pine Point venues, we're lucky to, to have some fantastic Pine Point venues. I love Farmer Caffley in Armagh. Always good pictures up there. Very very rural. Uh, you have hedges um stuff like that you have a hill and i was in one one of my favorites the other day in county cork last sunday ahabalog again it's very rural um not they're not the best race tracks or race venues um but from a, from my point of view as a as a photographer for looking for good pictures i think they, i think those two then you go up the west of course and you have uh, bell clare um and of course bell harbour in county clare um looking out onto galway bay that's beautiful as well but yeah point to point and we're very lucky to have gorgeous if you're bringing anyone from america or australia or anywhere around the world for a day, for, for a day out there's some magnificent point to point venues that you could bring them to 
Yeah, for sure. Got some great scenery. I was actually in Clearney a couple of weeks ago. It's probably one of the nice one of the nicest towns in the country. And to get a racetrack in among that setting, it's 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 magic. But yeah, Santa Anita is definitely on my bucket list. Hopefully, I get there at some stage. But look, Pat, I I I won't keep you too long. You're in Dundalk. You're busy out. Um, I might just ask you over the full weekend. Um, what would be maybe your best bet, or even a horse you're most looking forward to seeing? Um. Well, as I, I, I'm looking forward to seeing the, the, the horse and jockey chase in, in, in Turles. And as I said, I love Invi and I love Alaho. And hopefully um, hopefully they'll, they'll put up good performances and produce a crack and finish. And that they'll come home safe and sound out of it. And as I said, I'm looking forward to the bumper in Navin tomorrow as, or, uh, as well. Um, the Willie horse and the Garden horse, um, which, is, which is the usual thing with bumpers these days. But um, there are two graduates in the Pine of Pine field. The Pine of Pine, the Pine of Pine game is 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 going fantastic. The only thing I would say is would be a worry about the Pine of Pine game. Emma would be venues, and it's something um, I, I I spoke to pe- a few people about in the last year. As we know, you need the venues for the Pine of Pines. As we know, Drumahan carries maybe ten fixtures down south, and I, I I said it to some people, the powers that be. Tralee Tralee Racetrack is there. It it holds one pint a pint a year. And I was saying it to the powers that be that with a bit of care and a bit of foresight, there's no reason why you couldn't turn Tralee into a mini drum of hand. And if you had someone to look after it and and take it on, you could could have four or five fixtures in Tralee. Because I think with the the insurance problem sorted, Venues are going to become a problem, I think. Um, maybe the younger generation aren't as fond of pint of pinting or horse racing that their parents were or their grandparents were, as you know. And it's like I was in the Habilog on, on last Sunday, and the family down there, they do a great job and they love it. And they actually took their stock off the, off the land last August with having the pint of pint in January in mind. And like you don't, you won't get families to do that um, as much anymore. So it's um, I just think, I just think we have to look outside the box when it comes to venues. The pint of pint game is great. It's it keeping a lot of people on the road as well, and it's it's an industry in itself. It's very very important. Of course, it's a step up for the for kids. The likes of young Josh there, he's riding in pint of pints now, and the experience that it brings, and um, it turns them into top class amateurs the likes of Derek o'connor who's a legend of the game of course and barry o'neill and, and all them fellas so um i think uh, we, we we need to look at that going forward yeah i mean it's the best schooling ground i suppose for our horses and jockeys like the likes of davy russell coming up through the point to point ranks and some of like some of the horses even in the last few years we've seen like honeysuckle grade one winners gold cup winners to be ashamed to kind of see the game go downhill now i suppose probably needs a bit more action from from everyone in racing to keep it keep it on track like you were saying like you'd imagine a track like Trudy would be well able to hold a few more point to point fixtures i was i was i'd say i was point to point in there once so i think they, they hold a bit of show jump in there as well on the grounds do they but um yeah, you'd imagine you'd imagine places like that, like Jomahan's Jomahan's a great place. They they do plenty of racing there and there's plenty of schooling and stuff. Um the family minded very well. And if you see so many good horses and jockeys coming up through it, like you'd imagine uh it's such a vital part of the game, like isn't it? I think Pine Pinton is in a good place. There's no doubt about that. But I just think that you have to look to the future and you have to look to to minding it and, and, and ensuring that there is enough of venues going forward. You have to be looking 10 years ahead. And I just think that Tralee is there and like maybe someone could say, do you know what? Yeah, we could mind this place and look after it and it'll 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 cover five or six uh, pint of pints during the season for us. Food, food, food for thought, thought. Um, for everyone listening. But look, Pat, I'll wrap it up there. Um, best of luck in Dundalk and enjoy your day point to pointing on Sunday. If anyone is having a bet over the weekend, make sure to gamble responsibly. And if you like the content, like and subscribe to the channel.